I'm sorry that there's no epic thumbnail on this review. I've been doing them for the past year, but they do take a lot of time and I just don't have that time. <laughs> so uh, I'm not going to be able to do them anymore just so I can try and get more reviews out for you guys. Uh, again, I'm really sorry, but uh, here's the review. Man, I don't know if this is a good idea, but I'm gonna do it anyway. So, I really wanted to see Padmavat, and it's not showing at one of the theaters close to me. It's not even showing in Aurora. It's showing in a farther away theater in South Denver. So, I have to work tonight. It is 8.40 in the morning. And I have to work tonight at 6. So I'm seeing a first showing is at 10.30. That'd be three hours. 1.30, I get home maybe 3 or 3.30. And then hopefully nothing goes wrong on the trip. <laughs> uh, I don't think it's a good idea. <laughs> but I'm going to do it anyway. Let's go see Padmavat. Oh, good thing I checked the schedule. They updated more showings today, which I don't know why they would wait until this morning to update uh, show times for the day of the movie. You should have this stuff up like a week ahead of time. But thankfully, it is showing at the theater that's only a half an hour away at 11:45. So, I would still I would get out at 3, be home by I would be home around the same time. But I don't have to leave here until like 11. Woo! That's awesome. Yay. <laughs> oh, it's so much better. Oh, it's so much better. Thank you. Man, they need to release these show times at least a week before the movie comes out or three to five days maybe but not the morning of because if I didn't look it up to find the map for the theater in South Denver I wouldn't have known I guess for Indian movies I'm just gonna have to check showtimes the morning of the release just to make sure it's showing at a closer theater that's crazy all right, cool. I'm gonna go get breakfast then. <laughs> yeah. So I'm in the theater trying to see Padmavat. And the projector is broken. <laughs> oh my gosh. I got all the way down here. We're about to see the movie. Projector is broken, so they gave us these free passes to come back and see it another time but I don't know when I can get down here again I'm gonna try and see it next week but I work all weekend I don't know if I'll be able to get out of here sad core calm I'm sorry. but stay tuned I'm gonna try and see it because I really want to see it Okay, attempt number two to try and go see Pat Mavat. Uh, it's Tuesday night and it's the only time that I could go, but the problem was I'm having car trouble and so I couldn't get out there again earlier. And I convinced, whoa, oh, bumpy. I convinced my mama Howdy. to go and see the movie with me so she could drive us and I'm basically using you for your car. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm glad you love me so much. No, but uh, you know, I think she'll like it. It's up her alley. More bumpy. And uh, yeah, so hopefully the projector doesn't break down like my car is not working. There's a lot of things that keep getting in the way and not wanting me to see this movie. And this is probably the last time I would be able to see it before it jumps out of theaters because I've only seen 
show listings up through tomorrow. I don't see any show listings for this weekend. Of course, they may be adding it last minute like they did last weekend. So, hopefully we'll go see it. I'll let you know if we uh, did. Actually, you would probably already know since you're watching the review right now. Hmm. It's still It's sold, sold out. out. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe Padmava is sold out. Ugh. All right. So, maybe the showings since they don't have anything listed after Wednesday, maybe tomorrow, and I can't come tomorrow, I've got to work tomorrow, and I still don't want to try to go to South Denver, which I can't do tonight anyway because there's no more showings that we could get to in time, and we don't really want to go to South Denver, and also I can't, so I can't even go to South Denver tomorrow either, though. yeah, I can't go tomorrow. But they're not showing any show times for later in the week. I'm hoping it's in theaters for longer than a week. I mean, if it's sold out tonight, maybe they'll keep doing showings. I don't know. It's, it's frustrating. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to try and see it if uh, some showings show up for this weekend. I don't know when I would be able to. Maybe, maybe Friday if they have showings on Friday. I don't think I work, but I need to check. Anyway, if you're watching this and there's no review, it's because I wasn't able to see it and I decided to just put up the vlog anyway. And if you're watching this and there is a review, I guess I saw it. <laughs> okay, so attempt number three three to see Padma Vat. and today was an interesting day so I had to get the car fixed and as you can see the car is fixed I'm in it now now I uh, just need to make sure it makes it down to the theater and once I'm in the theater I need to make sure that the projector is not broken like what happened in attempt number one so if everything goes according to plan which so far it hasn't I will have gotten to see Padmavat, and the universe did not win in uh, its attempt to try and keep me away from watching a movie. I'm stubborn and I won't let the universe win. So let's go see what happens. I'm uh, hoping that it means I get to see the movie. All right, so far attempt number three has been working. <laughs> Uh, first obstacle was making sure that it wasn't sold out like attempt number two. So last night when my paycheck went through, as soon as it hit, I uh, went online and bought tickets in advance. <sighs> and it was a good thing that I did because they were already half full. So I'm sure it's probably sold out tonight. But when I went on Tuesday, I did not think it would be sold out because... It's Tuesday. It was a Tuesday night. Why would it be sold out on a Tuesday? But anyway, got the ticket. Obstacle number two was getting my car fixed to get down here. We did that, and the car made it, so I'm at the theater. Now for obstacle number three, making sure the projector doesn't break down like it did on the first attempt. <laughs> so, fingers crossed. Hopefully I'll see you after the movie and not with a message saying I couldn't see it again. <laughs> it was a successful mission. I finally saw Padmavat. Oh, finally. And it was good. I really liked it. Uh, some people think it's slow, but uh, I think it's supposed to be slow because it's a grandiose based on an epic poem just like you would have Shakespeare and other old writings like Beowulf and whatnot, even though there's action in it, it's supposed to be a slow drama, dramatization of real life. So if they sped up the movie any, I don't think it would have worked. And it, other people may have seen it as insulting to the poem. 
but I can understand why some people wouldn't like the speed. But anyway, here's my review, finally. Okay, I got my review done. This was a long process. Took me all that time to see the movie. Took me a while to find time outside of work to film the review. <laughs> and then we had all those trailers that had dropped, but I think I'm gonna do something different in the future for trailers, because it, it's getting in the way of reviews and I would rather do reviews, but whatever. Anyway, I finally got it done. I think it turned out pretty good. I hope you guys enjoy it and stay to the end because I have a little thing about Stardust and I'd like to see you guys join. Enjoy the review! Hey everybody! Korka Nala here and this is my review of Padmavat. This is going to be a spoiler free review. But before I get into that, I'd like to give a message out to the good people of the Rajput community. I have heard many concerns that the movie would not show the Rajput people and community in a positive light. And I would like to lay some of those concerns to rest that this movie does. It does show Rajput as honorable and valorous. I mean, it. I think... A Rajput that watches this movie should come out proud. If I was Rajput, I would be proud of my heritage in this film and how it's represented. Also, to the people in the Karnasena group that have uh, called on violence against this movie before it was came out when it was still in production, your leadership has lied to you. They used you. They used you to be able to push their own political agenda and they incited violence, they are terrorists, and they should not be allowed to have any political power. I would rather have the police and the Indian government find these leaders of the Carnicina and jail them for inciting riots and violence. It was uncalled for, it was disgusting, and I hope they never gain any kind of power. I hope that the people in the Carnicina group would realize what happened, leave the group, and blame those leaders for all of the violence that had happened. Padmavat was directed by Sanjay Leela Bansani and is starring Deepika Padtakone as Padmavati, Sahid Kapir as Ratan Singh, and Ravnir Singh as Sultan Aluddin Kalji. The story is based on an epic poem written by Malik Muhammad Jayas in 1540. It was a dramatized love story based on the battle at Chittor in 1303, which was uh, done by Aluddin Khalji, the second ruler of the Khalji dynasty, uh, coming in and invading the Rajput area and taking over multiple cities to expand his area. Chittor was the second, I think it was the second major city that he had taken in his quest to expand his area. And this movie talks about that battle of Chittor. And Queen Padmavati, who was in Chittor, along with the guy in the upper corner, who was Rattan. He was the king of Chittor. And then this guy is Kalji. In the story, Aludin is one of those people that's very self-absorbed and believes that all things that are considered precious belong to him. It's a huge motif throughout the film, and the main reason why he attacks Chittor is because he hears about the beauty of Padmavati and wants it for himself. And so he goes to battle Chittor to take what he believes is precious, because anything precious belongs to him. They set that up earlier in the movie with the previous king's daughter that he wanted her, and also this jewel that he wanted. Anything that he deemed precious in his mind, belongs to him, and if somebody tries to get in their way, he wants to kill them. Now, the pacing in this movie is slow. It is a slow drama. However, it has to be slow to be able to give weight to the epic poem. If you speed up certain sections, then it doesn't become consistent on the pacing. And if you increase the speed for the entire movie, then it loses that epic feel that the poem is supposed to give. 
So I think to properly represent the poem in film, it needs to be at the speed that it was at. So I think the pacing, although it was slow, was what it was supposed to be, and it worked. As for acting, everybody did a very good job. I was impressed with even the side characters and smaller characters being good actors. Uh, it's not very common with a lot of movies that even our side characters are good, but when they are, it really adds a lot to the film. So I was glad to see some of these side characters doing a very good job. As for our main cast, Dapika, who plays Queen Padmavati, does a great job. She's gorgeous, very beautiful, fits the profile for the character very well. But she's also graceful and very deliberate in her actions. When she moves, you can tell it was thought out. She was very smooth in all of everything that she did. Sahid as Rattan was very much of a king. You could tell that he had authority. He was a leader. He was also a good leader. He wasn't a leader in that people feared him. People loved him. They would do whatever it took to not just make him happy, but keep him safe. And so he had the admiration of the people. And that's the sign of a really great leader. And so I loved him as the king. I thought he did a great job. And it made sense why Padmavati would fall in love with him. It wasn't like a they were just arranged marriage or anything like that. Like they fell in love properly. And it made sense because both characters should have fallen in love. Ranveer as the Sultan Aluddin Kalji was incredible. He was great. Uh, all of the actors did a very good job, but he was a standout for that character. Very villainous. I do like villains. I think villains add a lot of weight to a film. Your heroes and your good characters can be great, but if they don't have an equally good villain to offset, then it doesn't work as well. And so his character coming in, he did a, an amazing job. I loved his performance. But another performance that I would like to highlight was Jim Sarva as Malik Kafour, who was the assassin and assistant to Vanir. He was in love with him and would do anything for him. And I thought he did a great job of playing really crazy. You could see it in his eyes, like whenever he killed someone or did anything for him, the admiration and just joy he would find in those crazy eyes. He did a great job. And I just wanted to mention that. There's a lot of movies that have a slow pace and that were dramas, but the acting is over the top, like a soap opera. And that pulls away from the drama. So they needed to tone it down and make it more of a realistic style drama acting, which they did. But also when they needed the over-the-top moments, especially with our villain, Kalji would need to be over-the-top but not cartoonish. He still needs to be a villain, not a funny villain. And he does that balance very well. One of the things that I've talked about with you guys before when you say, why don't I watch a dubbed version of something? And I say, because I want to hear the actor's performance. A lot of times that doesn't really come into play. It doesn't add or take away too much from my viewing, especially for something where it doesn't matter too much, like an action movie. But in something like this, it matters a lot. And so I was really impressed being able to have my subtitles and hearing the performances because I can really hear that balance between going too over the top or going too somber, but staying on that fine line of drama, but still good acting. Every line was deliberate and it was delivered with style and grace and I'm, I'm in love with this movie. Now let's talk about some of the songs. Now if you've watched some of my other reviews, I talk about how I want music and song and dance sequences to take place in the movie on location during the story of what's going on. I'm not a huge fan of when they do a music video earlier and then just drop it in a movie. It feels out of place and pulls you out of the film. But all of the dance, song and dance and song sequences in this movie 
took place on location with the characters and it was relevant for what was going on at the moment. So the story leading up to the song and dance and then leading out was a very smooth transition and I loved that about all of the songs. I absolutely loved the consistent tone throughout. It was great. Let's talk about the songs for the good people's side. You had Go Mar, which was the main song for Queen Padmavati that she did her dance for the king, for Rattan. He was the only guy that was allowed to watch it. It had all females in there and he was the only male. And the dance was for him. But the choreography in that dance was awesome. It was beautiful. The cinematography for it was beautifully shot. You had the firelight with the grand scale of the set going on. There's a music video for it. I'll link all of them in the description below so you can check them out. But the twirling of the dresses, and I liked how the camera would move in and out of the dance sequence near the end. Uh, a lot of it for the first half of the song, you have more of a wide shots, which looked great, some character cutbacks, but then you had some of the dancing going on inside the uh, camera moving inside the dance. And all of the movements were perfectly timed with the other people that were dancing with Queen Padmavati. So it was awe-inspiring. It was beautiful to watch just to see the synchronization of everybody. It was great. Another one of those songs was Ek Dil Ek Jan, which was the song for the love story between Rattan and Padmavati. And I thought it did a very good job of showing that love, especially when they had the montage scenes of them kind of playing with each other, joking around, you could tell that they were falling, and you believed that we were, they were falling in love. So I thought the, that music set to the little montage of what they were doing with each other added enough weight that you believed they were in love. And I thought it did its job very well. The first song on the villain side was Binta Dil, which was the song about Malik's unrequented love for Aludin, and that... He had to see everything from afar, that he loved him, but no one really paid attention to him. And he would do anything for him, even allow him to go and meet women, even though he couldn't be a part of it. Uh, the song was good as a song. Watching it afterwards when I was preparing for the review, I was like, this is a good song. It sounds good. It works very well. But in the movie, it pulled me out a bit. It felt like it wasn't placed right. Because everything that happened before it and everything that happened after it had a much different tone than the song itself. But you can't place it anywhere else in the movie. It doesn't, wouldn't make sense. It has to be placed there to make sense, but the tone of it doesn't fit the rest of the film. So... If it was my decision, I would have taken that out just because you've already set up ahead of time about the character of Malik and that he is in love with Aludin, that he would do anything for him. All of that stuff was already set up. So you don't need the song to set his character that way. It does add weight to it a little bit, but I just don't think it fit in the section that they put it in. So I, I would have taken that song out, but it is a great song. You should check that out. I've got it in the description. The other song for the villain side was Kali Bali, which I loved this one. Uh, not only did the song sound really good, they had a great use of drums and percussions in a very energetic style, but the choreography was incredible because it was very fast, it was very phonetic, and they had things like they would all be jumping up and down, but their faces would be stable. It's just their legs and arms going up and down. And the a lot of movements were very stark and very quick. But the synchronizing of all of those movements with everybody in the background was nearly perfect. And that's hard to do for something that's moving that sharp and quick. With Gomar, everybody was synchronized, but it was a slower, more kind of deliberate feel to it, very smooth in the way that they moved. So I think choreography-wise, it would have been a little bit easier to time everybody, but it still looked gorgeous. But with Kali Bali, the movements, because they were so quick, 
it would have been a lot harder to have everybody synchronized to the same steps. And again, with this one, just like Gomar, the camera goes inside where they're moving, you know, they're dancing around the camera. And so the camera movements inside and outside the dance sequence were great and they were stable and smooth and beautiful. I loved it. It was my, it was my favorite one. I probably listened and watched that video a good five times while I was writing my review. <laughs> Just like the main songs, the background music also fit the tone of the movie perfectly. They did a very good job of using drums, percussions, wind instruments, the string instruments in a way that really felt like it was adding value and weight and scale. So like when you had the large set pieces, the background music really elevated that feeling of awe of the large scale. When you were doing small scale and you had like interpersonal relationship stuff in the story, the background music really added weight to what was going on. So the emotions for everything in the movie got elevated by the background music. It was great. I would also like to give recognition to the cinematographer Sudeep Chatterjee did a great job showing the scale of the sets of the costumes the costumes were very important and they looked gorgeous very heavy weight looking costumes you could tell they spent a long time making those along with the sets but his use of light with firelight was impressive i loved i love firelight in general but i love the way he utilized it uh, it didn't make any of the parts of the set dark he made sure everything was lit so you could see it all, but the flicker of the flame really licked the entire sequence, and I loved his cinematography. Overall, cinematography's on point, directing's on point, acting is on point, the music is on point, the songs were good. My only negative would be the song Binta Dill, I didn't think really fit in the movie. They had already touched on his character before, it wasn't needed, and it didn't fit the tone of the rest of the film but it's still a really good song. And the pacing is slow, but it needs to be slow. If you speed it up, I think it would take away from the epicness of the poem and wouldn't really, wouldn't really showcase it properly. So overall, I'm gonna give this movie an A. I really like this movie. I'm glad I got to see it, even though it took me three attempts and almost a week, over a week to go and see it. <laughs> But I really like the movie. I think it's probably going to be one of my favorite movies of 2018, even though we were only in February. I mean, I still have another 10 months to go. So right now, it is my favorite movie of 2018. We'll see if it keeps that for the rest of the year. But what do you guys think? Comment below and let me know your thoughts on this movie. What did you like? What did you not like? What do you think I got wrong where do you agree with me let's get a discussion going on keep it civil down there like share subscribe tell your friends and i will see you on the next video quick promotion everybody i'm having fun using the stardust app which allows you to make up to a 30 second reaction to movies and tv shows and i'd love to see your reactions and put them in my videos if you're interested in that, download the Stardust app. I've got a link to it in the description below. And make sure to follow Coracon. And whenever you make a reaction, make sure that you tag Coracon so that I get notified and can see it. Whenever I make a reaction video or a movie review and I see your video, I will take clips from it and put them in my video. If you're a YouTuber, make sure to put your YouTube channel name on your reaction if you want free promotion. And if you're a fan of my channel and just want to be in there, great. So tag me on your reactions. And to be totally transparent and honest with you guys, when you download the Stardust app, the first person that you follow gets credit for the download. So if you want to follow me and give me credit, make sure that you follow me first. If you want to give your favorite YouTuber a credit, make sure that you follow them first. But either way, make sure that you follow me at some point and tag me in your reactions so I can get them in the videos.